What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week number seven in year two of our San Francisco 49ers franchise, where the 49ers picked up a victory over the New York Giants to improve to three and three on the year. Let's check out some highlights. Jake Rudolph getting the start in place of the injured Eli Manning will connect with Odell Beckham Jr. down the field for a 30-yard gain. Then on third down and nine, Rudolph again looking for another big gain, and Victor Cruz this time will take it all the way down to the five-yard line. Line, but once again, the 49ers defense holding strong in the red zone and forcing the Giants to kick a field goal. The Giants would take an early 3-0 lead. Then on third and 14, Dimitri Todman delivers a first down, but it will come at a cost. He is down with an injury on the play. We will take a look at that later on in this video as the 49ers. Joel Edison will kick a 51-yard field goal there and we have a tie ball game 3-3. The 49ers with the ball again on the left side. Here is Selleck with the reception and he will pick up another big first down then on first and goal. All of Wally fighting over some Giants defenders into the end zone. Touchdown for the 49ers and they will take a 10-3 lead over the Giants. Rudolph though looking to answer on the left side. Odell Beckham Jr. coming back for the ball at the 27 yard line. Then on third down and seven, Victor Cruz again open in the middle down to the 11 and then on third and 15 Rudolph on the right side. Sean Trell Wilkerson will get the interception. His fourth of the season and the 49 will take over they do punt the ball away though and the Giants will have the ball on the 11 yard line but that don't matter they have Odell Beckham Jr. down the field beating Demarcus Avery on the play and he will take it 89 yards to the house we have a tie ball game 10 to 10 a tough cover for any matchup but a fifth round rookie did not stand a chance Mike Davis filling in this time uh, for the injury of Kirkland Marion with a nice run there It'll be first and 10, though, as the Giants will take back over the ball. And Shane Vereen had himself a heck of a day running the ball against this 49ers defense. And he will take it into the end zone there. Touchdown for the Giants. They will go on top 17-10 to over the 49ers. The Giants will get the ball back. But Gerald Hodges Jr. will force the fumble. And Aaron Lynch will recover. We have a 17-17 ball game with the 49ers defense making a big play there. Five minutes to to go in the third when that happened. Then with under three minutes to go in the third, Fedorowicz with the catch. He will take it down to the nine-yard line. Then on third and goal, Jennings will take it into the end zone and give the Giants the 24-17 lead with 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. But Carlos Hyde said the quarter's not over yet. 69-yard touchdown run from the running back out of Ohio State. The 49ers needed him to step up with that big play of Ability in the absence of Kirkland Marion and he would deliver 24 to 24 would be the score as we go into the fourth quarter nine minutes to go in this game down the right side of the field on third and eight a big time defensive pass interference call would set up this Mike Davis touchdown run and they would take the lead 31 to 24 over the Giants with five minutes to go but that is plenty of time for Rudolph to get down the field as he finds Victor Cruz here That'll take it down to the 33. And then on 4th and 10, they decide to kick a field goal. A very weird call with about a minute 38 to go. They are still trailing by 4, but trusting their defense. And their defense would get the ball back on 2nd down and 10. This is Jennings with the reception. He would take it all the way down to the 28-yard line. And then on 3rd and 10, Rudock looking for the end zone. It is tipped into the air. And Sean Trell Wilkerson for the second time of the game would come down with the interception giving him five total on the season. The 49ers would escape with the victory to improve to 3-3. Three and three. Next up we have the Houston Texans. They are currently at 4-2 and two on the year. Let's go ahead and get to practice to hopefully prepare for them. But the 49ers also are dealing with a lot of injuries currently. 
Um, as you can see, you know, obviously Kirkland Marion is out with an injury. We saw Navarro Bowman and Dimitri Todman both go down in that last game. We're going to have to keep an eye on them to see what happens, but certainly not a great sign for the 49ers. A lot of question marks defensively anyway and offensively. We really don't see this 49ers team pile up a whole lot of yards as you see Kaepernick struggling here trying to pick up some first downs and he will fail the challenge. The 49ers will have to re attempt it um, in order to get some kind of medal so not a good sign going up against a very good Texans team especially their defense in week number eight the 49ers are going to have to find a way to deliver some things and again Kaepernick just struggling in this drill today and not really liking the routes on it but I mean to see him do this poorly is not a good sign for the 49ers and this one is going to be incomplete as well. The 49ers do get a bronze on offense. Not what they would like at all. But they're going to have to take it uh, and see what happens here. But a lot of question marks going into this next game. The good thing for the 49ers is they're back at 500. 3-3 three and three on the year. We've won two in a row. So we have some momentum. But another road game against a very good team could be troublesome. Our first question is coming from Logo T Zip. Are you considering trading for Paxton Lynch, who is behind Zach Lindsay on the Broncos depth chart? No, we are not. Um, we're on a two-game win streak right now. We don't really see much of a reason to really change things around. And more so, I would really like to find my own quarterback in this series instead of trading for one. Then Big Air RC, are you considering a two-quarterback system? Uh, much like the first question, we're really not looking to change things around. We've won two in a row. Kaepernick, for all his flaws, has not really been turned turning the ball over a whole lot this season. And I don't really know that switching up the quarterback is going to change anything one way or another for us. We have a lot of holes on this team, and I, I don't I, I don't really see Mike Glennon changing anything. We, we don't have a lot of very good receivers right now, especially with the injury to Dimitri Todman. So we'll have to see what happens. But right now, Kaepernick has won two in a row. There's really no need to try to change things up. Let's go ahead and check out some of the scores from around the NFL. First up, we have the Saints taking down the Redskins 45-14. to The Saints improved to 4-1-1 one, and one on the season. The Redskins falling to 3-3. Three and three. The Saints went 10-6 and six last year. The Redskins went 7-9. and nine. So definitely an interesting call. I mean, we haven't really seen Kirk Cousins play that badly is the weird thing. We know they have Denton Ritchie on the bench, but Kirk Cousins is not trying to lose his starting quarterback job. So we will have to continue to keep an eye on them. Look at Harris Blevins, the first round pick out of Michigan State. A great game for him for the Saints there. As we check out the interceptions, one by Harris Blevins, just doing everything all over the field there for the Saints defense. Fumbles recovery and forced Nick Fairley forcing and recovery. 24 to 6, the Seahawks with a victory over the Indianapolis Colts. The Seahawks improved to 3 and 4 on the year. The Colts falling to 1 and 6. The Seahawks 9 and 7 last year. The Colts went 8 and 8 last year, but the injury to Andrew Luck certainly set them back very far behind this season. They have really not been able to put together some wins and Andrew Luck was down with an injury last year. They had Scott Tolzien step up and play fairly well, though. This year, they do not have that advantage. Uh, Bobby Wagner would get the one interception on the day. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. One by Dequell Jackson. It would not be recovered, though. 23-13, to the Cardinals with a victory over the Jags. The Cardinals improved a 6-1 and one on the season, despite going 5-11 and 11 all of last year. The Jaguars, on the other hand, 1-6 and six on the year, despite going 9-7. and seven. So the Jags continue to struggle, unable to put together some wins here. And it's just looking like a lost season. They might be a bit too far behind for them to really turn it around at this point. As you see, Kadarius Folston with a 33-yard reception there. Sacks, one and a half for Campbell. And Darius Chekwa making it happen. The rookie out of Clemson there. Another rookie out of Clemson for the Jags making some plays as well. So former college teammates going up against each other, both making some plays for their team there. Next up, we have the Panthers, 28-14 with the victory over the Vikings. The Panthers improved a 3-2 and 1 on the season. The Vikings falling to 4 and 3. Not a good game by Teddy Bridgewater. Four interceptions on the day. The Panthers went 8-8 eight eight last season. The Vikings 11 and 5, so starting off 4 and 3, certainly not where they want to be, especially within a very competitive division. We saw the Packers and the Lions really play well last season. The Bears did 
did struggle last year, but the Bears are actually looking better this year too. So a very tough division. If the Vikings keep picking up some of these losses, they might find themselves in a difficult situation to make the playoffs. Fumbles forced. We are going to have none in this game. 14 to 10 with the Patriots getting a victory over the Dolphins. The Patriots now five wins in a row with James Vallejo at quarterback. 263 yards, one touchdown, one interception for him. So the Patriots now at five and two on the season. The Dolphins, on the other hand, at one and five. Not where they wanted to be. Again, we talked about it last week. They went four and twelve last year, and then again they have you know they spent the number two overall pick on defense with Demarco Payma. And while he's been doing okay so far this season, they, we just have not seen enough improvement from this Dolphins team overall. And it just continues to haunt them at this point. Crawford, though, did get two interceptions on the day. And I guess Garoppolo might have thrown one too because Vallejo only had one. No fumbles, though. 32-28, to the Bears with the victory over the Ravens. The Bears improved to 3-3 three and three on the year. The Bears had three uh, wins all of last season as you see Whittington 287 yards two touchdowns two interceptions for him so it's nice to see the young quarterback finally getting some time Jay Cutler again out with an injury right now but three wins all of last year they have three already to start this season the Ravens on the other hand fall to two and four on the year they went three and 13 last season as well so not a good start for them and we've talked about it Joe Flacco just continuing to struggle, and it's especially weird because we saw last week that their backup, Manuel, came in and had a very good uh, game, so I don't know what they're really thinking right now, but it is not working out here for the Ravens. Let's go ahead and check out the fumbles recovery, or got a, a sack in this game as well. 31-3, to the Broncos crushing the Eagles, and this is big because the Eagles have been playing very, very well, and as you can see, Paxton Lynch is actually going to be playing now. So Zach Lindsay back on the bench here. The Broncos at 5-2 on the year. They went 5-11 last season. The Eagles, though, were 5-0. They've lost two in a row. So they're down to 5-2 on the season after going 4-12 last year. Hopefully for the Eagles, this is not a, a sign of things to come. Hopefully they can continue to pick it up and show improvements. But losing two in a row is not good. They did lose to two very good teams in the Cardinals and the Broncos, though. So... They do have that going for them there. Um, and we're looking to see if Tremaine Brock played in this game. It does not look like he did, though. He did not play yet. Akeem Tlaib and Stewart with the interceptions on the day. I did want to see how he did with his new team, but maybe they're bringing him along slowly, allowing him to learn the uh, defense and everything like that. Amos would force a fumble, would not recover. 31-20, to the Packers with the victory over the Bucks. The Packs now at 4-0. Uh, the Bucks, on the other hand, Four and three on the season. Now, this is significant because they started off four and oh, so they have three straight losses here. The Buccaneers went seven and nine last season. So, when they started off four and oh, we were wondering if they really turned the tide, but it's not looking to be the case with three straight losses. The Packers again at four and two after going 10 and six last year. But, uh, you know, again, when you have Aaron Rodgers, you're always going to be in the games there. No interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced. One by Randall. It would not be recovered. 19-17. to The Jets getting a victory over the Bills here. Both teams currently at 3-3 three and three after this game. The Jets went... 8-8 eight eight last season. The Bills at 10-6 and six last year. So the Bills kind of, again, taking some steps back. 3-3. Three and three. Currently, they're going to need to turn it around quickly if they would like to compete. But it looks like the Patriots have found their rhythm and might be running away with the division. We'll have to keep an eye on that as, as time goes. But you never know. James Vallejo could start to struggle uh, at some point. We just don't know yet. Uh, Jenkins would get a sack and a half there. McClune, a rookie out of Pittsburgh, would get a sack as well. So teammates of Sean Kendall, who will be returning for the 49ers this week. Calvin Pryor would get the one interception on the day. Fumbles forced, one by Harmon. It would not be recovered though. 27-17, the Cowboys would get the victory over the Rams. The Cowboys at 3-4 and four on the season. The Rams falling to 4-3. and three. Nassib would lead the Cowboys to victory there. And the Cowboys, again, going 10-6 and six last year, starting off 3-4 and four was not where they wanted to be. But when you have your top two quarterbacks go down with an injury, it certainly puts you in a bind. The Rams, on the other hand, were looking good coming into this game 4-2, and two, but losing to the Cowboys' third-string quarterback, not really where they wanted to be. They do still have question marks on offense. Defensively, the Rams do have a lot of playmakers, though, but just unable to get it done today. Uh, the Rams, again, at 8-8 eight and eight last season. 
Uh, Gaines would have the interception there for the Rams. Fumbles forced, we would have... Uh, let's see. Three fumbles forced, two of which would end up being recovered there. I don't know. That glitched out, it looked like. 17-14, to 14, the Lions would get the victory over the Browns. The Lions improved a 3-3 three and three on the year. The Browns won 5-1, 226 yards for Houston Church. He did not throw a touchdown, and he did throw an interception. So the Browns continue to fall apart despite going 9-6-1 last season. Maybe people were thinking they had turned the corner. The Browns were going to be a better team. And then when you add a star rookie quarterback like Houston Church, it looked like things were going up for the Browns. But they have just been struggling all season long, unable to get things done. And they are currently at 1-5-1 and one on the season. Darius Slay would force a fumble. It would not be recovered. The Steelers are back at it. 52-22 to 22 with a victory over the Chargers. And Roethlisberger, a killer game. Nick Foles threw a touchdown as well for the Steelers. And they are now at 5-2 and two on the season. The Chargers fall to 3-3. Three and three. So the Chargers with more losses already than they had all of last season. But we've talked about it before. The Steelers' offense is just... It is terrifying. They have been picking teams apart all season long. I mean, putting up 52 points against a very good Chargers defense, mind you. And it's just interesting. I don't know how the Steelers got two losses, especially to the Ravens and Titans. But they did. Uh, those are their only two losses so far on the year. But their offense is looking deadly right now. And we are going to have to keep an eye on that because they are probably the best team in the NFL right now. 45-7, to the Raiders with a victory over the Titans. And the Raiders currently at 5-1-1 one, and one on the season. The Titans at 3-4. and four. The Raiders went 7-9 and nine last year. The Titans actually did the same there. But it's interesting to see the Raiders as well. You know, we just talked about how good the Steelers are looking. But the Raiders at 5-1-1 one, and one, and with a huge victory over the Titans are looking very good as well. And Khalil Mack has been killing it for him. Look at this. Five and a half sacks in one game. What? Khalil Mack is just destroying offensive lines this season. Here is Seeley Kirkendall, the rookie out of LSU. He had a sack as well. Interceptions, Warlow, Divine, a rookie out of Notre Dame, and Smith would have the interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. One by Williamson, one by Morgan. Neither would be recovered. Players of the week, Drew Brees, 25 of 42, 304 yards, three passing touchdowns for him. Benny Logan, nine tackles and four sacks. William Gay, 10 tackles, an interception, a fumble force, a fumble recovered, and a touchdown. I still think the five and a half sacks is more impressive, as good as that is. And then, of course, Roethlisberger, 22 of 34, 251 yards. Uh, we saw him get all those touchdowns. I mean, he's just having himself a killer season. Back to re-signing. The 49ers still trying to bring in Aaron Lynch here. And we're just going to offer him a lot more than he is looking for. Not a lot more, but we're going to offer him more than he has been asking for, uh, which we've been doing anyway. It just has not worked out for us here. So we're going to try to make it happen. We would love to have Aaron Lynch back. He's only 24. And there you go. Aaron Lynch will return on a five-year deal. And the 49ers were, were very happy to have him back because he is a key piece to this defense. And then on to Carlos Hyde. With the injury to Kirkland Marion, the 49ers got to be considering increasing this offer here. And we are going to be doing that. We would like to have Carlos Hyde back. He had a great game for us last week. He really did struggle outside of that one big run. But I still like the idea of having Kirkland Marion and Carlos Hyde there. So here are the injuries. Navarro Bowman and Dimitri Todman each out for seven weeks to go with Kirkland Marion out for six weeks. So Chris Owusu was out for the remainder of the last game. He will be back for this other one. But once again, another Big blow injury-wise to the 49ers rookies here. Texans not dealing with many injuries on the season. Osweiler still a quarterback for them. 76 overall. TJ Yates backing him up. They have a rookie, Tyler, as well. Lamar Miller at running back with Alfred Blue. A very good running back. Prosh is going to be at fullback. DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Will Fuller, Braxton Miller there as well with Jalen Strong. So a very good young receiving core. Then they have the rookie out of Ohio State, Logan Roan, 80 overall with 84 speed. The 49ers struggle against tight ends a lot. We are definitely going to have to keep an eye on him in week number eight because he is a player that could go off on us, especially with the injuries that we have 
Um, you know, with uh, Navarro Bowman being out. Copel's there. J.J. Watt, of course, one of, if not the best defender in the NFL. They still have Will Fork there as well. Merciless at left outside linebacker. McKinney and Cushing at middle linebacker. At right outside linebacker, they have Clowney. I mean, so much talent on this defense. And then you throw in a top 10 pick in Jamon Stovall, a guy that has the best combine we have ever seen 96 speed, 6'1 height, 81 man coverage. I mean, the guy has a lot of potential there. And this is going to be one of the best defenses we face all season long. Certainly going to be a very tough matchup for Colin Kaepernick and company. But we'll have to see if they are able to get it done. If the 49ers are able to pick up another win. Currently we are at 3-3. Three and three. We will be on the road against a 4-2 and two team. It should be an interesting matchup, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in week 8 as we take on the Houston Texans. Later.